98 FM. The sound of the city. 98 FM's Dublin Talks. Weekdays from 10 a.m. with Adrian Kennedy. Now, um, it's communion season right now, as many of you will be aware, especially those of you with uh, children aged 7, 8, and 9. Um, and if you have a child that is at communion age, uh, you. You know how expensive it can be. The clothes especially. A nice dress or a nice suit or a nice leather jacket or whatever it is for communion day can set you back a few hundred quid, depending. Uh, There's a lot of competition among parents on uh, communion day to have their kid looking better than any other child. To spend a small fortune, for example, on little girls and their dresses. Um, Which could explain... Why the majority of Irish parents... We need to get a load of this. I'm interested in this survey. The majority of Irish parents now want their children to wear their school uniforms on their big day. Figures we came across today from Mummy Pages shows that 63% of parents now want their children to wear school uniforms or sacramental robes on their communion day in the church. Parents believe that it would ease the financial strain of the big day and would take the pressure off keeping up with the Joneses because every child will look the same. And what, what did you want to say on this? I think uh, there's no harm in wearing school uniform. I'm 31 now and we wore them and it did us no harm. Like, there's no competing then. Because the parents tried to compete to outdo the neighbours and I think... I think in a way that some parents, they feel pressured so they would buy more expensive stuff or have a big party. I think there's no harm in putting them in their uniform. So, in your opinion, this whole idea of kids making their communion in um, either their school uniform or like a sacramental robe covering up what they're wearing, do you think that's a good idea? I think in a way, the um, like parents that would have not like... Um, more income i think yes because then they wouldn't feel the pressure because some kids would have big parties with limos and all that and then their kids be in school saying oh i this this and then the kids would be jealous in that sort of way if they're all in the same uh, clothes there wouldn't be the pressure for, for the kids wise yeah, and and i know for example when uh, my kids made their communions they did have to wear those kind of white robes covering up uh, what they were wearing. So all the kids in a group photograph or whatever were all the same. Yeah, Uh, they were all the exact same. Yeah, I think that way is good. There's no pressure. Because some kids can afford, say, um, Nike example or Hilfiger. Other kids can't. And then to be kind of could be slagging our peer pressure. So you think that this will cut out the uh, the fashion parade will cut out the the competition of you know and the, by the way the competition is fueled by parents it's they're the ones who are actually spending the small fortune on the on the clothes now uh, having said that if was you said that, sorry yeah you said that um school uniform was used yeah did was there any other clothes child hardly wore um, and, and- in my school, we had the school uniform for confirmation and communion. And But once after, obviously, the photos, we were allowed to go into our normal clothes. And we obviously went off with our parents or whatever. There was none of that. There was no fighting or anything because it was only in, for the photos we were in our uniform. So there was no competing. Okay, stay there for one second. 67979081 is our telephone number. Um, Natalie, your young fella made his communion in his uniform as well. Yeah. And how did you feel about that? It was all right. All the boys, all the boys looked the same. It was grand, but it just cost a fortune at the end. How? Well, because they have to wear, um, you have to buy a new jumper if, the, if there's a hole in the jumper. So you have to go buy a new jumper, new shorts, new trousers, new shoes. Okay, so you, you may as well have been buying uh, buying him a whole new outfit, except all you were doing was buying him a, a newer school uniform. Exactly, yeah. And did you have to buy him other clothes then for the uh, for after the church? Yeah, well, for after the, after like his celebration, he still got a suit. And when did he put that on? After uh, the church, when I when I got home, I changed him into the suit for his party. Okay, and then you went off to the party, and he had his lovely suit on. So it actually cost you more money. Cost a fortune, yeah. And then the next day he goes into school, he has to wear his uniform again. He's not allowed to wear the suit. 
for photographs and stuff like that. For photographs, yeah, yeah. So in your case, with a lot of parents, uh, you probably, because, you know, communions are held in April and May, uh, the jumper you bought last September is probably in bits by now. So you have to go and buy a, a new one so that he looks nice on the day. And then you've also to go and buy um, clothes for him to wear for his special day. Yeah, yeah. Cost, it costs an awful lot of money. And did you notice whether or not it, it cut down a little bit on the fashion parade? No, not really, no. Because all of the... All they of the... all look the same in the, in the church anyway, regardless. But in the school that my son goes to, the girls make their uh, communion in the in the dress, and the boys make it in their uniforms, and then for confirmation, it gets switched around. Why is that? I haven't a clue. I don't know. Oh, it's, been... it's just been done like that for years. All right, do me a favour. Stay there for a second, Natalie. Our telephone number is six seven nine seven ninety eight one. Text or WhatsApp us o eight seven seven. 989898 0877 989898 Jude, you're on 98FM. How are you, Jude? Not too bad at all, Adrian. Jude, um, you think that these 63% of parents who now want uh, their children to wear school uniforms or sacramental robes are what, cheap? Yeah, they're, they're, it is cheapness. Because if someone, if a parent wants to dress their girl or their boy up to the nine and want to spend a fortune on it, if they... Uh, why shouldn't they? These people just want the uniform, so they don't want to be shown up cheap because their child isn't dressed as good as anyone else. And even after the communion, the child goes to a hotel, it goes to have parties, whatever. They still have the best of everything. So why it's just shown cheapness? And why should one parent who wants to dress up their lovely little girl or their handsome son? So why should they sacrifice that just because someone else's cheapness or because they can't afford it? Because someone, if someone can't afford it, isn't anyone else's problem. Okay, here's the thing. Uh, when the kids make their communion and they're having photographs and all that, if they're in their school uniform or if they're covered in a, a sacramental robe thing or a, a, yeah, they all look the same, it's not some sort of a fashion parade. And that's what the sacrament of Holy Communion has become in recent years. And it is, and uh, I, my child never made his communion. First, that week we went off to Munich, that was because he doesn't go to a Catholic school, I'm not Catholic. But what I'm saying is, I wouldn't begrudge some woman or ma some family who wants to dress up their son or daughter. Their day. I, it's totally hypocritical, I understand that. I'm totally hypocritical because they've probably never made the church that. But if they want to, why should they have to dress their child according to someone else's? child. Because it, it is made it's, what is meant to be a religious uh, sacrament into a very expensive fashion parade. That's what it's become. It has become that and that's because of the parents, even the parents who dress. But that's because of the like parents that. that you're talking about. I want to spend an, an absolute fortune on my little Johnny or my little Mary um, and then other parents who didn't spend as much feel insignificant because, you know, they're, they but didn't keep not, up with the Joneses. Yeah, but you don't, if you're dressing up, you don't ever have to take anyone else's child or anyone else's feelings into, it's not even a consideration, whatever way you want to dress your child, no matter what occasion. Why should people, it's just being, this is an excuse, this is just to show, it's trying to make other people not feel as cheap as the people who are wanting to spend loads of money. It's just, it's an excuse. And it's well, listening to Natalie's speaker. story, and Na Natalie, just to go back to you for a second, yeah. you, uh, your child did make his communion in his school uniform, but that didn't make you cheap. In fact, it made it more expensive for you. More expensive, yeah. yeah but double I'm the not... cost. Double the cost, yeah. really. And that's what I'm saying. But I'm not downing that lady, Natalie. But what I'm saying, it is more expensive because in September they need new uniforms and then and it comes so soon and they have to wear the uniform and the uniform they have to get another one because the woman wants to go out with it. So if someone parent, if some parent wants to dress their child up, why should they have to consider anyone else's needs, only them and their children? It is a form of cheapness. It is cheap if you if you were grudging someone spending more money than you are on your child. It is a form of cheapness and it's tightness. If you haven't got it, don't spend it. Okay, so if you are... It, it, your standard. If you are part of the 63% of parents who now want their children to wear school uniforms or sacramental robes, 
you're cheap. Yeah, yeah, because you want other people who have the money not to spend it, just to keep, just to make you look good. If you're poor, why can't they wear the uniform, regardless of what other people are wearing? Send them into the with their uniform in. But why should someone else be begrudged spending the money they want in their child? It is cheap. It's just it's, it's, it smells. Uh, it's just just gives a huge hint of cheapness, tightness, and I just don't. I want other people not don't want to spend that money. It's just I don't want to look bad. It's all about them looking bad, the parents looking bad. Okay, stay there for one second, Nigel. You're on ninety eight FM. Hi, Nigel. How are you, Adrian? I'm good, thanks, Nigel. Just, just, just you deny me there. The, Jesus. Will you just think for a minute, there's people out there that actually haven't got a fucking extra penny to buy clothes. And what's wrong with just a roll? You're, you're really just getting under my skin. Like, let there's them there's people out there. There's people let out them there wear the and, and let them go and have their parties after it. But it'll save face for your child sitting there that hasn't got, that parents haven't got the money to, to, well, if the parents to, to haven't go got along the money, with it. Let them wear the roll. The form, it, it'll start to form a bullying, dude. It, hand me, it'll start bullying. Other kids will be looking at the other kids that haven't got it, and that's where the bullying begins. There's a little so kid the, there slagging the one that has probably a hole in his trousers. It's just so the so people wrong. who have it, so the people who have it should sacrifice, not spend. No, no, money. no. I'm just saying. No, I'm not saying that. As I said, go let them have their their fancy hotel and they'll go for their dinners after it. But for the thing, for there and day on the day of the church, yeah, a robe, everyone equal, all the way down the middle. And but then if someone can't afford it, let them wear the robe. Fancy dresses. Let them wear the robe. But why is it someone, why can't someone spend a fortune on that dress or that they, suit they if they want to? They can after it, I'm saying. After no, but why it. can't it? No, but why does it have to be after it? Why can't they do it there or then for that day in the church? Why can't be, they do because it? Because it's, it's all tightness. about letting your child feel as special as the next person instead of your oh, child being overcompensating. It's no, those it's parents over don't want to be recognised. I it's didn't every- spend that money. I wouldn't. I didn't spend my money on that. Not I didn't. All. It's all down to saving the parents' faith, the people who haven't got it. Because no, I don't it's hear. about the child. Will you listen, you, you bloody moron? It's about the child. It, it, I think so the child, the child doesn't it. feel left out. It's, it's, the parents are probably suffering that they can't have the gown. So, yeah, put them all in the gown and then go and have your fancy day. But so for don't. that child, for that child not to feel... Like a little dog just dragged along in, in clothes that are unfit for the others. But that kid's not going to be slagged any of the ways. And no one will know that that kid didn't go off and have a meal after it. So but every kid, child has to dress up in clothes not fit for others then? It's equal. It. Equal. But not it, no, equal. there's no equal. There's no equal. Life have is equal. Life isn't that, equal. No, as far, uh, okay, uh, uh, Nigel, what Jude is saying is... If a parent wants to splash out and spend a fortune on their daughter or their son on their lovely mega clothes for their communion day, that's nobody's business and they shouldn't have to wear a school uniform um, uh, to pretend that they haven't bought the stuff. Yeah, exactly, Adrian. Like, you can go all out, Adrian. You can go all out and have your fancy meals and all and do that. That's no problem. And no one's begrudging that at all. But when you have but you're a parent begrudging that is really in the church, the though. Yeah, yeah, in the church, it doesn't matter. Because when they go home and change, they can go to their meals and around to their friends, wherever they do. Their oh, so there's a different stuff. form of begrudgery. So you won't begrudge them in the, you begrudge them in the church, but you won't begrudge them after. So there's no, a I'm different form of begrudgery. No, I'm talking about the child here, Jude. What, what part of this do you not understand? I'm talking about the child. Without the child feeling being bullied or laughed at. And I'm talking parents, about a child as well. well I'm yeah, talking, talking about the about child whose child parents are willing to spend money on them. We I'm must, talking about a child. Do all that after the church. But like, why should they? The why should they have to? Tell because me why they should. Because there's, there's people there less off. And if you so it's cheap. Mm. So that's what I'm saying. It's to it's make the parents. It's, it's, it's all down to making the parents feel better. It's cheap. It's not for the... It's still cheap. 
Listen, Listen, William, or just, there's no, no. teeth about it. Okay, a, a, a lot of people, in fact, I'm about to go to somebody else who disagrees with the idea of uh, making your communion in your school uniform, and that's you, Orla. Why are you against the idea? I just don't think there's any need for it. Uh, I had two girls, they both made their communion. Mm-hmm. One dress, I think, cost less than €100, Euro, and the second wore her cousin's dress by choice. By choice, very and, good, okay. Yeah, and quite a lot of them that made their communion wore big sisters or cousins' dresses. Out of choice, they wanted to wear the dress that they'd seen the big sister in. And that's great so w- when yeah. it happens. Uh, but as you know, with a lot of parents, they're the... Yeah, uh, but I think parents have to stand up and say... Well, this is our budget, and we go and get something for it. No, but uh, what I'm I saying mean, is uh, the, the reason it's become a fashion parade. I mean, for God's sake, kids arriving at, at uh, for their first Holy Communion in limousines and crap like that. Yeah, but that is so rare. It actually is so rare. Like, I, I've never seen anything like that in all the communions. Well, I have, yeah. Most people go home. They have maybe a bouncy castle. Friends and neighbours call in. They have a house party. Even most people don't bother going to hotels. So, you know, you can make it as expensive or as cheap as you like. I just, I don't agree even with the cost of 700 is all just clothes. That's probably dressing a whole family for the day and the food. What it says, you know, yeah, what it said was that uh, the average cost is 703 euro for the, I mean, that's still an awful lot of money for one day. Yeah, but it? is that, like, are they saying that's just for a, a dress? No, or it's, is but that it's just it, the moms and the dads. I assume the, it's for the whole day. Brothers. Yeah, I assume it's. Yeah. But so, it, it's still an awful lot of money for one day. It is, but you could also do it a lot cheaper or a lot more expensive. So I do agree, kind of, with you. I think people should be able to celebrate the day the way they want to. And I think if they had a robe, there would be a cost to that. No school is going to give out the robes for free. So there's still going to be a cost. Peter, you're on 98 FM. Hiya, Peter. How's it going, Agent? Good, thank you, Peter. Uh, what did you want to say on this? You have a lot of people on. You have a guy there who says he's a non-believer and you have religious people on there saying you should be able to spend as much as you want and spend all this money for the, the religious day. Yes. If they were all actually religious, they would be doing what Jesus said and Jesus said, give up all your worldly possessions and follow me. If Jesus was alive today, he'd be disgusted because he actually hated the rich. He wanted, he, didn't, he wouldn't want people going out in all these bedazzly dresses. He just wanted a white home. So if they really want to follow the beliefs of the Catholic Church, don't spend any money on where the boy go. And I, 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 okay, I, I have a feeling though that that's not the reason that parents are saying that they uh, want their kids to no, be wearing. Not, the reason my parents are saying it is because it's, be, it's becoming. The catwalk, and because it's becoming a fashion show, and it's back to my point, if Jesus was here, he wouldn't want that, because he told everybody, give up everything you own to the poor, and follow me. So okay. why would Jesus, who, who didn't like the rich, and didn't like people spending all this money, and all over the overindulgence and stuff, and yes, people are going to celebrate a religious day to Jesus, and the Fourth Holy Communion, by spending loads of money, and overindulgence. So, so if we're to be um, religious, uh, uh, religious then we, yeah. the line of the Bible, you would literally go in in a white robe. When you see the evangelicals, adults are being baptised again, you don't see them going out in fancy suits and stuff like that. What do they wear? They wear a white robe. Because that's what Jesus wore. Because he was poor. Okay, no, I take that point. Um, but like I said, that's not the reason that people are, uh, parents are saying they want the, the kids in school. Because it's, Within the next five years, it could be costing you fifteen hundred euros to two grand. Yeah, to, if for a child to make a communion. Yeah. If you like the new wedding, when you go in and say you're looking for a wedding cake or this for a wedding, the price is tripled. You know, and now it's getting to the point where you have Aldi and Little coming out saying there's a market here for people who haven't got the money. And now what's happening is people who just buy the dresses, the people who buy the expensive. I know somebody who's gone to Louis Copeland to get a suit made for the Yeah, I've actually heard of that myself. Believe it or not. Yeah. So, and then you have the child who's gone with maybe the 30 or the 40 you were dressed. The child doesn't know the difference between Louis Copeland and Little. The parents know the difference between Louis and it's what happens between Mary and Colette are talking. Oh, she only got that dress in Little. But I got him in, in this shop and this shop. Mm. You know what I mean? Yep. Whereas Jesus, but again, back to the Jesus point, he would not want this. 
No, he wouldn't well, indeed. I'm not, I'm no, no. not religious myself, but that's what Jesus said. All right, let me just bring in uh, one or two very quick final calls on this. Uh, one is, Joan, you're on 98FM, Joan. How are you? I'm not too bad, Adrian, and yourself. Good, thank you. What's your opinion on this? The whole idea um, of, of kids wearing school uniforms, not dresses and everything else. Well, it's up to a parent what they really want to do. But I was at a confirmation on Tuesday in the north of Ireland, and my grandson made it. And it was at five o'clock in the evening, and he just wore his grey trousers, his white shirt and his tie, with a little dove pin on the tie. And all the children were the same. The girls just wore their skirts and the white shirts. And there was nothing. We just went for a meal after. And, you know? Yeah, and do, do you think that the uniforms are a good idea? Well, in some cases, I have a, I've only all grandsons, but um, I had girls and they all wore dresses when they made their communion. But um, I had another grandson made it two years ago and um, he had the blazer and that uh, from the school. But a lot of people were able to hire the blazers from the school and it was lovely. You know, but I do like to see the little girls dressed up in dresses. I do. Uh, but the, uh, the problem has become, I mean, and, and uh, that last caller there really highlighted it well, that, you know, the likes of Lidl are selling communion dresses. And I have heard parents say, not in a million years would I put my daughter in a Lidl communion dress. Yet I've seen the dresses and there's absolutely nothing and wrong with them. they're beautiful. Yeah, they are. They're, they're too, fantastic, yeah. yeah. But then you might see, you might hear, um, you know, it could be uh, a mother saying to another mother, I got it in Lidl and then the mother... The other mother might say to in our, you know, in our home, um, she got her dress a little, and then the kid comes out and says it to the kids, mm. you know. And then it's a source of embarrassment. Yes, you know that's what it would be. So, so really, if you're if you're getting your child a communion dress from Lidl, you should uh, tell lies as to where it came from in the first place. <laughs> well, you just don't say it was probably from Lidl. Yeah. That, I think that's know? probably the secret to this. Okay, it's let me just bring in one last call, and on line one. Uh, I have 0872... Uh, Paul, you're on 98FM. Adrian, how are you? Good, Paul. What do you want to say, Paul? Um, regarding fashion show, Adrian, I think it's become a fashion show for the parents. I, I think, yeah, and I said that myself. It's, it's not know, the kids it's, that are fueling this fashion show. It's their mammies and daddies. It's mainly the mammies. I, I, I had a mammy in the car a couple of years ago, Adrian, and... and the, the, the bragging she was giving to me about the new dress she had bought and she was going to get the tan done or the hair done and she was going to get this done and that done. And I had to turn around and say to her, I mean, she could have probably reported me, but I had to say to her, was, I had to ask her, was our child's day or our day, like, you know, because um, I think she was forgetting whose day it was. I think that the parents should remember whose day it actually is. And yeah, I think that the, the girls look well in their little white dresses and I think the boys look well done up because the parents are going to buy them something anyway. They're not going to go in an old pair of trousers playing football in yesterday evening. They're going to buy them something new anyway. So there's still going to be costs, still going to be costs involved anyway. Obviously, yes. Um, but do you think the idea of a, the school uniform is a good idea? Um, uniformity is gone. Uh, I, I, I remember my daughter may, uh, making a confirmation a few years ago, and it was in uniform, and then home and changed, and then we went out for a meal and that. But um, yeah, uniformity is good. But I'm sorry, when you uh, say uh, home uh, and yeah. changed, home and changed into the lovely yeah, dress. Yeah, we, we into a dress, and we brought her out for a meal. Then yeah, right. Absolutely. So uh, uh, yeah, this is the was, thing. So no, was, no, none of our classmates got to see her lovely dress. Uh, well, some of our classmates did lived in the area, others didn't, because the next day they went in in uniform again for the as, as somebody had ever said for the um for the, the class photograph. So it was uniform again, like you know. Oh, so, I, I, so yes, I, is the answer to my question. A lot of the parents, or a lot of the classmates, didn't even get to see their lovely dress. Yeah, or her lovely yeah, dress. Absolutely, absolutely. But you still think it's better. Uh, yeah, it, it, it looks good. I think uniformity is good, but I think you know. Is individuality it, it, not better? Individuality is good. Uh, is, is good. Is good as well. I, I fully agree. But that's what I'm saying. The, it, like the kids should be allowed to have their little white dress and their little their little suit or their trousers and waistcoat or whatever the boys want nowadays. Because as I say, mummy and daddy are going to buy um, for, uh, outfits for them anyway. Even if they wear a, a sacramental robe, they're going to buy outfits for them anyway. So there's still cost involved. Whereas Mammy is going to splash out, I'm not too sure about Daddy, I'm not being misogynistic here, but Mammy is going to splash out, in some cases, a lot of money on a new dress, a hairdo, professionally done makeup, false tan, blah, blah, blah. 
the getting that it's not actually your day, mommy. It's it's your daughter's day or your son's day. All right, appreciate the call. Thanks very much indeed. The sound of the city. 98 FM's Dublin Talks. Weekdays from 10 a.m. with Adrian Kennedy.